everybody, Anne here, and yep, the pink hoodie is back because it is cold outside. I think it may be 45, 46 degrees. I mean, that's not freezing cold, but it's pretty cold, and it's rainy, it's damp. So the first thing i got to do is I've got to modify that water catchment system so that all that fine particle stuff doesn't get in. So here, let me show you what I did. But first I want to show you my girl. She is inside all snuggled up because she is not coming out here in this cold. Just look at this sweet little girl. She likes to stay bundled up. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, I do kind of bundle her up a little bit if it's cold in the morning or even at night. And she will just stay like this for, well, <laughs> until it, until it warms up. God love her. You're a good baby. I came out to the rain barrel today and it was full. Yep, it was full, but it had all this gross green stuff in it. It's probably harmless, but it had formed like a thick film down at the bottom and I figured, I don't know. So I have cleaned it out and I am going to modify it just a little bit more. I'm gonna put one screen down. I'm gonna put this t-shirt that I got at the dollar store down over the top of that and then another screen on top of that and then the lid. Um, I got my trusty little drill out with the biggest bit that I have. I drilled just one hole for now just so that it can rain um, you know the stuff that's on the top hopefully we'll be able to get out. Now I have a hole saw but I don't know how big I want the hole to actually be because I like to connect a, a hose to it and uh, you know, let it drain into another bucket. So that's on the horizon. But here, let me let me just get started on this part first. And there we go. So hopefully this will work this time to help filter out a mo few more of those finer particles. And I'm just going to shove it up underneath of here, like it was before. I don't have cinder blocks by it, but I don't know if this is going to blow down. It didn't blow down in the storm the other night, so. Um, let's see here. I also wanted to position it so the little hole... Where's my little hole? I need to have the hole going out this way. Alright, where is that hole? Where is it? It's got to be around here somewhere. There it is. Right there. And it is facing kind of like the downward slope. So, I think this is all positioned pretty well. And it's going to rain here in a little bit, so hopefully I'll get a little bit more water, and hopefully it'll be nice, clean water. I know it's going to be a little bit more work having to take this off and then the t-shirt and, you know, rinse the t-shirt out if it's got any of that greenish, yellowish, powdery stuff on it. But it'll be worth it, so I'm really hoping it works, because that water that was down in there, you know, I wouldn't use it for washing. I would use it for watering plants and stuff, but definitely not washing, so... Wish me luck. It has started to rain. I'm going to go check and see if it's working. I know it's going to work, but I just want to make sure I got the bucket set up right. It is working, but you know what? I'm going to pull this a little bit further this way just to make sure. We're all get, already getting a little bit of water down in there. So... It's just kind of collecting up top here though, that's weird. I, I, I suppose it'll go down in there eventually. Just gonna wash this for a little bit here, standing out in the rain, filming for all of you. Yeah! I imagine it's just kind of pooling up here because the t-shirt's down there. Let me see if it is going into inside. This is probably a mistake. Yes, that was a mistake. Okay, yeah, it was going down in there, and uh, I just needed to leave it alone. Um, Got to wait till the t-shirt gets fully soaked before the water's going to drain more. But if you can listen, the water is dripping down in there. So I think this is going to work. I think it's going to work just fine. See, listen to that. It's draining down just fine now. Okay, I think this is going to be much better. We'll see after it gets done raining what the quality of the water is that I collected. 
While I'm waiting for my rain barrel to fill up, there's something else on my mind. The temperatures are going to drop tonight between 38, 39 degrees, and I was really worried that that would kill them. So are those temperatures enough to cause frost or freeze damage or whatever? So I went out to the internet to find the facts, and here's what I found. Here's an article I found on the Chicago Tribune. Frost technically refers to the silvery coating of ice crystals that forms on plants if a freeze occurs when there's lots of water vapor in the air. However, gardeners often use the term freeze and frost interchangeably to refer to a cold spell. Most gardeners know their first frost date, but it's actually the first freeze date. In gardening terms, a light freeze or light frost refers to temperatures that fall just a few degrees below freezing for a few hours. Some hardy plants may not be damaged. A hard frost or killing frost comes when the temperature drops further below 28 degrees for a longer time. And I figured I'd go to one of my favorite sources for facts and information about growing things, and that is Farmer's Almanac. I wanted to see what they had to say about all this frost versus freeze business. Frost in your plants, what you need to know. Frost occurs when air temperatures dip below 32 degrees Fahrenheit and ice crystals form on plant leaves, injuring and sometimes killing tender plants. Oh no! And then they talk about some things that may affect the temperature. Cloudy skies, you may be in luck if the temperature is cool but clouds are visible, your plants may be protected. Wind. It also influences frost. If the air is still and windless, the coldest air settles to the ground. The temperature at plant level may be freezing, even though at eye level it isn't. A gentle breeze, however, will prevent cold air from settling and keeping temperatures higher. Next, they talk about moisture. Humidity and moisture are good things when talking frost. When moisture condenses out of humid air, it releases enough heat to sometimes save your plants. When the air is dry, the moisture in the soil will evaporate. Evaporation requires heat, which removes warmth that could save your vegetables. So I think I'm going to be good on that count. Very humid here. If a frost is predicted, cover your plants both to retain as much soil, heat, and moisture as possible and to protect them against strong winds, which can hasten drying and cooling. You can use newspapers, baskets, tarps, straw, and other materials to cover your plants. Cover the whole plant before sunset to trap any remaining heat. And keep the soil moist by watering your plants the day a frost is predicted. So that's good for me because it is raining right now as we speak. Here are the facts that I was most interested in. Light freeze is 29 degrees to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Moderate freeze is 25 degrees to 28 degrees Fahrenheit. And a severe freeze is 24 degrees Fahrenheit and below that. So I think I'm going to be golden because it's only going to get down to about 38, 39 degrees. And it's only going to stay that cold for maybe an hour or two at most. Phew. Well, I am relieved. I went to the experts, got the facts, and it appears as though my plants are going to be just fine and that this 38 or 39 degree weather is not going to be considered a frost or a freeze by any stretch of the imagination. So I think it's going to be just fine. I'm, I was a little worried, quite frankly, that I had started planting too early and this one last day of this drop in temperature was going to just kill everything off, but it's not. So it's good to know your facts. It's good to know, you know, when to plant, when not to plant, and what to do if the temperatures do drop. So now I know. It's been raining for a couple of hours. It's now just stopped, and that is how much I've got. I would say I've got about one-third of this 32-gallon barrel trash can, whatever, uh, filled up. So that is great. That is really, really great. And if you see, there is basically just a couple different things of sediment in there. Otherwise, it looks really, really good. It looks nice and clear. So I think that this little update that I've got, this little modification, really, really worked. So, yep, happy. Now to close out this video, I figured I'd show you some of the glorious things I found around my property after the rain. It's just a wonderland out here. Thank you.
And that's all I got for you today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.